drafting, probably one of, if not the most important skills to learn to improve your riding. Do it correctly and you could save 30% of your energy on those pedals. Do it wrong, you'll feel nervous. <laughs> you'll waste energy. And end up plain frustrated. Get it right and you'll be riding faster, easier and more comfortable than ever. Here is how to do it in pro style. Come on, man, on, get on the wheel. The pros, of course, are the best of the best when it comes to learning to draft. They get as close as possible to the rider in front in order to save as much energy as they can for when it's needed most. It's a free ride, tucking in behind the rider in front and using their effort to break the wind so you can go that much faster. Drafting occurs when you move into an area of low pressure behind another rider. That rider in front is literally breaking the wind view. His effects will be much greater at faster speeds, flat rows, descents, but you'll still feel some form of an effect on steeper climbs too. It may look like an easy skill to master, but the pros have spent their lifetime in perfecting this skill. So in this video, we're gonna give you our top tips on how to get even closer to that wheel in front. Communication is key if you're gonna be able to draft well in a group. So make sure that the riders you're with know how to display good group etiquette and that everyone is riding safely. Good group communication involves letting riders know if there's something up ahead, like a hazard, if you're gonna turn or slow down. It's also a good idea if you're about to get out of the saddle on a climb, even a steeper climb, for example, because when you do that, you do tend to shunt backwards into the rider behind. So you can give them forewarning of that, they can adjust their position and line accordingly. If you're all confident in each other's communication skills, it gives you a little bit more confidence to get that much closer to each other. Pay really close attention when you're overlapping wheels. And if you can, try to avoid it. That's because if there are any sudden movements from the rider ahead, they're gonna knock your front wheel, potentially cause a crash. It's actually one of the more common causes of a crash in the pro peloton. There are situations where you do need to be side on to that rider in front, mainly when the wind is coming from the side and you're looking to shelter right in here next to them. But in these scenarios, it's more your body is next to them rather than your wheel tucked right on the rubber of their rear wheel. If you are gonna get close to that front wheel, give yourself a little bit of room so that if they do slow down, you can then use your momentum to slot in there as a bit of a buffer zone and then go back when necessary. It's all about giving yourself that room to maneuver to keep yourself safe. Don't feel like you need to be totally glued to the wheel in front at all times. There are actually times where it benefits to back off that wheel. For example, a corner. When you're coming into a corner, let the rider in front just get ahead. And then when they break, you can use your momentum from the corner to join them back the other side. Another great example is maybe when you come into a climb after a descent, you can back off going down the descent and then you can use the drag from the rider in front to help you up that first bit of the climb. If the rider in front of you really likes to change their pace a lot, you can actually just back off them a little bit, give them a little bit of room between you and you find somewhere kind of in the middle ground so you're not constantly buzzing on their wheel as they change pace. When riding super close together, try not to fixate solely on the wheel in front. Instead, look to the rider ahead of you and their body language, things like the terrain, gradient changes, how the road is gonna impact the rider's decision and where that front wheel is gonna move. If you pay better attention to those aspects, you'll be able to better react to any changes to the wheel in front, allowing you to get as close as possible. Avoid smashing it through if you are taking turns on the front to break the wind. You want to make sure that the rider behind you is on your wheel before you start ramping it up. And the same goes if you're getting on the back. You kind of want to get ready for a little sprint to get on the wheel. But once you're on there and in the draft, you're going to have all the benefits of that lovely slip streaming. When drafting in a group, you want to choose your moment wisely to look down, get some water, maybe take on some food. If the hammer's really down, the pace is fast, probably best to tuck in and hang on. Use moments on gradual descents to take a little break, get that water and food on board. You don't want to get dropped in a drafting situation in a big group. It's going to be so hard to get back on touch. So don't jeopardise yourself. Don't jeopardise losing touch and wasting energy 
and you really don't need to. So there you go, a few tips to help you with your draft, and I really hope this improves your confidence and your ability to get as close as possible to the wheel in front, because it really does improve your riding. If you have any of your own tips, please leave them down in that comment section below, because we'd love to read them. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up.